Christ, where we delve deeply in the Word of God to discover what it means and how to apply it to our lives. We continue today to discuss what Paul references as knowing Christ, knowing Christ, and what that's all about. We are picking up in chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Paul has been discussing the significance of knowing Christ and how it is worth more than anything else you could possibly imagine, how this should be our priority as believers. So if you read with us, we'll look at verses 10 through 14 of chapter 3 on the value of knowing Christ and how that should be our focus that pulls us forward. And as we press on towards the ultimate goal, would you read with us now? I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Paul, in this section, continues a theme that he started a few verses earlier, how to know Christ should be the ultimate goal, the ultimate purpose of our lives, how everything else pales in significance and value to knowing Christ. Paul says, again, in verse 10, I want to know Christ. And that deep experiential knowledge, not just head knowledge, not just knowing about Christ, not just knowing who Jesus is, no, the knowledge of walking with Christ, the experience of walking with Christ, and how knowing Christ in this very deep way involves trusting him and knowing him and walking with him in a very deep experiential way that will take years to really develop. Paul says, that's my goal, to know Christ. That is my ultimate purpose and my ultimate goal. Yes, I'm going to proclaim the gospel. Yes, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. But the real purpose, the fuel for all of those other things begins with knowing Christ. That's where the, everything else needs to flow out of that. There's no other reasons but to know Christ. And so Paul says, I want to know Christ and know the power that raised Christ from the dead. Think about what he's saying there. Knowing Christ is the daily walking, the hour by hour, minute by minute, knowing Jesus, walking with him, trusting him. But part of that is Paul desires to know the power that was behind the resurrection, Think about this. He mentions it in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, and he talks about the power that raised Christ from the dead, God's power. That power is available to each and every believer. Through the Holy Spirit, that power is available to each and every believer, each and every person that is in Jesus Christ. And think about that for a second. So when you're feeling weak, when you're feeling unable to accomplish anything in your day, when you're feeling just overwhelmed, God has promised you power. He's promised you power through the Holy Spirit. You can connect with God's power. That strengthening will be available to you. That's how we get through difficult times, how we know we don't have to go it alone because God's power is in us through the Holy Spirit. Now, that word in the Greek is this fascinating word that I love. Those of you who know me know that I love dunamis, the Greek word, because it's explosive power. It's the, it's the uh, word where the word dynamite and dynamic in English come from. The origins of those words are the Greek word dunamis. means explosive, transforming power. Now, just think about that for us believers. Think about that for Paul as he's writing this under house arrest, isolation, a terrible time. But yet, in the midst of that, he's saying, I want to know Christ. And as part of knowing Christ, I want to know the power I want to know and experience that power. I want to be able to wake up in the morning and when I don't have the strength, know that God will provide the strength. I want to know when I'm up against difficult circumstances or difficult people or difficult trials, the power is available to me to get through each and every day. And that unlimited power source is available to you through prayer, through the Holy Spirit being in you, through the scriptures and the wise counsel of other believers that's how you connect to that power. Ultimately, through the Holy Spirit, that's available to you. Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to know that power. But notice what he goes to next in verse 10. I want to know his suffering. I want to join with Jesus in his suffering, even to the point of death. Now think about that. Paul is saying this is the identification of being in Christ, so much so that I'm willing to suffer. I'm willing to go through the hard difficulties that come 
from knowing Christ and being persecuted for that, the suffering that Paul would have endured because of his faith, the suffering that Paul would have endured because he identified with Christ and was not going to shy away from that reality. He wants to know Christ, even if it means suffering, because that's the way it works. If you know Christ, there will be times of suffering that comes. Jesus said it himself, this world is not your friend. This world will bring you troubles and trials, but I give you my peace. And that peace, like the power, comes through the Holy Spirit. And Paul's saying, I want to know Christ so much so that even when I'm going through the suffering, I am still going to identify with Jesus. I'm still going to identify with Christ, even to the point of sharing in his death. Now, that's an amazing level of trust and faith there. Paul's saying, even if it leads to my own death, my physical death, I know that I can trust Jesus even that much through suffering and through even through death. I can trust Jesus because, verse 11, he wants to experience the resurrection of the dead. He knows that's a promise that God has guaranteed with the Holy Spirit. He knows that knowing Jesus means you're identifying so much so with Christ that you will also experience the physical death at some point, yes, but more importantly, the resurrection. You will be able to walk through death like a doorway into resurrection life, into eternal life with the glorified body ultimately. That's what Paul's mentioning there. I want to experience that one way or another. Either Jesus comes back and I get to experience it that way or I go through physical death into eternal life and I get to experience the resurrection power in that sense as well when God will raise me just like he raised Jesus. The scriptures tell us this in Hebrews and in Hebrews and other passages that we are going to follow the same pathway that Jesus led us on. He was the pioneer, the forerunner, the one who went before and showed us that death is not the end. Physical death is not the end. There's a pathway through death into eternal life. And Paul's saying, I want to know Christ so much that I follow that same trail. That Jesus is the trailblazer, the one who went through death, was resurrected, was raised from the dead, given a glorified body, and returned to his place with the Father. And ultimately, that's all of our destinations. We will be with Christ. We will be with the Father. We will be able to walk through physical death into eternal life. Death is but a doorway for us Christians. And Paul's saying, I want to experience that. One way or another, that's what I want to experience. I want to hold on and know Christ that much through suffering, through death, into resurrection and eternal life. That's ultimately his focus. And he says he wants to make sure they know he hasn't achieved this yet, that perfection of the glorified body, that perfection of eternal life. Paul's not saying, he's not claiming he's achieved that. No way. He's still in his physical body. He's still limited by sin and the sin nature. He's still one of us, essentially. Paul's saying, I haven't achieved this yet or managed to get to this perfection yet. No, but it's my goal. It's my focus. It's my purpose. I want to know Christ so that someday... I get to go through the suffering, through the physical death, into eternal life, just like Jesus. I want to identify so closely with Christ that I'm on the same path. I'm on the same uh, line as Jesus modeled for us and how he went before us uh, to show us the way, essentially. The reality is Paul saying, that's my focus. So much so, even though I had not achieved this yet, but that's my focus, so much so that I will press on. That term in the Greek is an intentional choice to make this motivation your primary motivation. Your focus and your priority is to keep on going one step in front of the other, one day at a time, one year, one month, whatever the level of time you're thinking, you press on. You're willing to take that next step. You're willing to trust God enough to take the next step and to press on towards the ultimate goal, the ultimate prize. And if you notice in verses 13 and 14, Paul makes that very clear. He said, my my effort now is to press on and I'm going to focus and keep this priority in mind, ultimately to know Christ, yes, but the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to press on with this determination, this motivation. I'm going to focus forward and I'm going to press on forgetting what is behind and looking toward the future, looking forward to what's ahead. Now, some have abused this verse to say we need to just blot out the past. The past doesn't exist. That's not what he's saying. He's saying you have to acknowledge the past. You're a product of your past. That's just the reality. But you don't want to be a prisoner to your past. You don't want to be a prisoner to your past. You want to understand that you are to work through your past, work through those issues, 
but you don't focus on them. You, you don't make that your, your goal or your, or your focus. You're not a prisoner to your past. It's just part of who you are. No, you understand that, that in order to run this race successfully, your focus has to be forward. You can't look over your shoulder. You can't focus on the past. You can't focus on the present even. He's saying you got to focus on the future. You got to understand that God is calling you heavenward. God is calling you towards being with Christ eternally speaking. That's our goal. So forgetting what is behind and looking forward to what is head, ahead, I press on. I make it my goal to run as far and as fast as I can to make it my purpose to run the race that's set out before me, to run it with purpose and, and focus and to know this is what God has set up for me. This is what God has designed for me. This is what God has called me to. This is why Jesus possessed me in the first place, was it so I could possess him. The whole reality of our salvation is so that we will know Christ. The whole reality of our sanctification and growing more like Jesus every day is so that we can know Christ. In this life, yes, but ultimately, eternally, know Christ and be with God forever and be in the presence of God forever. That is our focus. And if you think about it, Jesus modeled this for us as well. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he knew what was ahead of him on the cross, he chose, even in his humanness, he chose to trust God. He chose to look beyond the cross, look beyond the horrific suffering he would endure. His focus was always forward on the mission that God had laid out for him, on the future that God had guaranteed for him. He focused forward. He pressed on through very difficult circumstances, horrific circumstances that few of us will ever experience. And yet he looked through the suffering and saw to the other side the reality that God was at work and that God could be trusted and that God would keep his promises. And even though Jesus died physically, he knew at that last moment as he entrusted his spirit to the Father, as he gave up his life, no one took his life, he gave it up willingly, but as he did that, he knew he was trusting the Father and looking forward through death into resurrection and ultimately life. Jesus knew his purpose, he knew that the, the plan would be fulfilled, and he was willing to pay that price. And that's what he models for us. He looks through the temporary suffering, as horrific as it is, into the ultimate future reality. That's what we Christians need to do, even during our difficult circumstances. Understand we are to press on, looking forward, focusing on what God has in store for us, that's where our eternal hope comes from, but it's also where the strength and confidence comes from. From knowing Christ in this deep way, we can go forward with confidence and joy, knowing that we will never be alone, never left alone. God will always be with us. So brothers and sisters, as we journey on together, I urge you to make it your highest priority to know Christ, to know Christ and the depth of that experiential knowledge will pull you forward and help you forward in whatever circumstances you may find yourselves. So today, continue to go in God's strength and God's energy, empowered by the Holy Spirit to do what God has called you to do. Focus forward, forgetting what is behind, looking forward to what is ahead. Press on towards the ultimate goal, the ultimate prize to which God has called you. Thank you for joining us.